Here's our two different types of uh, 3D printed end caps. Here's some extrusion ends which are nice and sharp, lovely. I'm going to get rid of that, really just a case. Locate them in and they'll probably pop straight in. Give a little tap with a rubber mallet just to seat them in. Bit of percussive maintenance there. And there we go, no sharp edges, fantastic. And just to show you, we've got probably, well, that I can see on this side of the cockpit, got one, two, three, two pound fifty there. There's seven pounds worth of end caps just on this side of the um, cockpit alone. Double that, that's uh, about 14, 15 pounds. And I guess these have cost me, there's hardly any filament in them. They've cost, cost me about 50 pence, I guess, for the whole thing. Yeah, so well worth it. Okay, so thanks for watching, and uh, hang around if you like for the uh, Fusion 360 CAD part of this. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Okay, so here we are in Fusion 360, and uh, as ever, starting with a sketch, and you've probably seen this sketch before if you've seen the uh, cockpit series that I've been doing, especially with the armrest and other 3D printed parts where I'm starting to merge stuff with the extrusion, or use the extrusion essentially uh, cross-section to mount various bits onto the cockpit. So this is no different. So we've got our 30 by 30 mil uh, extrusion cross section here, and then we've got our 30 by 60 mil cross section here. And really, there's once you've done this uh, once, you can use it again and again. And you'll also see what I've done is I've done a uh, an offset of these internal areas here. I think that's 0.2 of a mil. Let's just have a quick look. Go to inspect. Go to that line, go to that line. Actually, it's 0.1 of a mil, which just gives us a bit of leeway because 3D printing's not as accurate as the CNC machine is when it's cutting things. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to force this, if you like, this object into the end of the extrusion. Okay, so we've done our cross sections previously, and it's a fairly easy geometric shape. At the end of the day, it's a rounded square, or there's a circle in the middle. Uh, this piece here, you can get the dimensions for this online. Um, generally, the extrusion suppliers will actually have this on their website, and you can actually, sometimes they'll even supply the DXF cross sections for you, and you can just import them straight into Fusion 360 and uh, get cracking as it were. So coming out of the sketch we're then going to extrude just the square to start with and that makes the main kind of end plate and let me just flip that over and show the next extrusion. Now what I did here is I just extruded up I think it was one or two mil. Let's just do the inspect again and remind myself how far I went up there. Yeah, it was just one mil. That's essentially going to be the maximum, if you like, and that will fit really tightly into the extrusion. But in order to get to that point, what we then do, first of all, I think I filleted, actually, I just did a quick cheeky fillet on the end plate there just to round that off. I'm not sure what that other sketch was for. It's probably uh, something that I use for this. For some reason, I couldn't extrude the 30 by 60 mil up in the same way as I did this one. I had to uh, start from this level, but you'll see why in a sec. So the next extrude we did is we extruded up from this level here, that one mil height, and we put a taper on this one. So it tapers in, Let me just have a quick look, see, remind myself what the taper was. It's just a five degree taper there, look, and up another three mil. Basically what that means is we can locate this into the end of the extrusion uh, fairly easily because it's obviously going to be a lot narrower at this end and we can give that a quick tap with a mallet as you saw on the video earlier and that will then lock in just by friction on this square 
one mil parallel extrusion at the bottom here that I'm highlighting. And then really it was just a case of doing the same again for the 30 by 60 mil. So just do the extrusions there and the tapered one. Just turn the sketches off so you can see that a little bit easier. And then the fillet on the end there. Okay, right. Only thing we needed to do, and I'll just show you some Cura, is we went to Make, highlighted that body there, and we just wait a couple of seconds whilst Cura loads up. There we go. Okay, we've got Cura up. Let's just zoom in on this so we can see it a bit easier. Click that. It's obviously not going to print with this big overhang underneath it like that. So we just need to use the rotate tool here and spin it 180 degrees and then it fits flat onto the bed. Always a good point um, just to check underneath to make sure that is fit, fitting or sitting flat on the bed. There is a function here to make it lay flat but I've had a couple of objects recently where it wouldn't do that and in fact when I'd done this once and it laid flat I then reloaded the model in from the Cura save file and it was actually tilted up and off of uh, wasn't flat on the bed of course that resulted in a uh, ruined print or luckily it was only the start but it still didn't work <laughs> so you have to be a bit careful about Cura maybe it's fixed in the, I think there's a new version out shortly and maybe it's fixed in that but anyway um one thing i wanted to show in cura was so we've got one of these end caps but it's a bit pointless just printing one it only takes about 20 minutes or so what we can do is we can find the 3mf cura project files that i always save uh, as well as the g-code we've got here that we actually use for printing and let me find i think that's the one if we yeah there we go look you can just drag and drop these into the scene here and before you know it you've got nine it does its best to space them out but you can manually do that if you want to get a bit ocd uh, or in fact if you've got a, a brim around them and you don't want to merge the brims you can space them out a bit more but basically what you can then do is you can save this uh, as not print with octoprint but save to file and save the g-code for nine or in my case i did 16 in one go and then save the project as 16 in one go and that saves you an awful lot of time because you can just send this job down to the printer and then an hour, a few hours later when it's done all nine of them, um, you can come back and uh, they'll all be there and ready to go. So it saves a lot of uh, aggravation. You've almost got your own little you know, mass production line going. So there you go. Very simple um, shape really at the end of the day. And just to show a bit of cure feature in terms of printing more than one of the same object out at the same time. So thanks as ever for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.